Aaron is about to become a very powerful major hurricane in the Atlantic Ocean, and this will bring impacts to land, including the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, Bermuda, and even the east coast of the United States. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Aaron and why this will be impactful for some areas. We're going to begin with what's happening right now across the Atlantic Ocean, and this right here is Aaron, which is going to become a powerful major hurricane as we go into this weekend. It is only a few hundred miles to the east right now, the Lesser Antilles and it is rapidly moving to the west right now. It is expected to skirt just to the north of the Leeward Islands, but tropical storm impacts are still likely, and we may even see some low-end hurricane impacts to areas in the very far northern section there of those Leeward Islands and also near Puerto Rico as we go into this weekend. Eventually, as we go into next week, this is going to continue to turn, and exactly where it turns still remains uncertain. It could go towards Bermuda. It could even skid right along the Bahamas and even up towards North Carolina. So there are some scenarios that could still happen and all that is going to depend on how rapidly this intensifies and also the exact track of our upper level ridge that is currently sitting out here in the central Atlantic Ocean which is our Bermuda High. And here's a closer view of Aaron this morning which honestly looks very healthy right now. We have a lot of convective towers that are going up around an area of defined circulation and we could easily have an eye by late today over here in the western Atlantic Ocean. Additionally there have been some healthy outflows that have been coming off our hurricane which also indicates that this is intensifying at a rather quick pace. Now, Aaron is expected to become a powerful hurricane, but on top of that, the forecast for this is very tricky when it comes to the track. So this is the forecast from the National Hurricane Center, which does outline that this will become a major hurricane as we go into Saturday, just to the north of the Lesser Antilles. So notice how close, by the way, it will be to both the Leeward Islands and also Puerto Rico. So tropical storm force impacts are expected in those areas, and we already have tropical storm watches and warnings going going in effect to those areas. As we go into Sunday and Monday, this will become a Category 4 hurricane just off to the north of Puerto Rico and just to the east of the Bahamas. Now, what really becomes tricky is what happens after this because you'll notice the cone of uncertainty grows a ton, which also indicates that there is a high amount of uncertainty on exactly where Aaron is going to go as a major hurricane. And this will be a Category 3 hurricane probably all the way up until being parallel to at least North Carolina. If not, it could even be a little bit further north than that. But notice how the cone of uncertainty, again, is very large. We could see this still go in the direction of North Carolina. That is entirely a possibility. Landfall is unlikely, but it could really get close to the coast, which would cause some major problems, especially near Cape Hatteras. And then also on top of that, if it does take a more easterly path, this could go right into Bermuda. Now, if this were to take a more easterly path, that would basically require a much weaker disturbance moving off to the north, meaning that the intensification is not going to happen nearly as quickly. Now, if the intensification happens rather quickly, quickly this could take a more westerly path which could even bring some moderate maybe even at times major impacts to areas in the Bahamas I don't think we're going to see anything too far beyond some minor storm surge and high waves and rip currents but obviously if it does take a more westerly path we could start to talk about at least some tropical storm impacts happening now one thing I think is for certain at this point I do think Florida is likely out of the worst of seeing anything out of this I do think there will be rip currents I do think there will be high waves I don't really think there will be much more beyond that I do think things become a lot more questionable though the further up the coast you go we could see something happen in new england we could also see something a bit more significant happen in the carolinas and over the next few minutes we're going to talk more about what exactly could happen in these areas depending on what exactly evolves out of upcoming major hurricane Aaron. and this right here is the latest from the european ensemble members giving you an idea of basically all the different scenarios that still exist and i do think that this is a little bit too diverse i do think it's a little bit too large of an area of where exactly the eye of Aaron is going to go but you can see how large it's still shows for an area of spread. I, again, do not think it's going to go as far west as Florida at this point for the center of this upcoming major hurricane, but I do still think it is still very well in play that we could see something very close to the east coast of the United States, perhaps within 150 miles of North Carolina, I still think is a possibility, which would be enough to bring at least some of the outer bands into North Carolina and also pose the risk of storm surge. So this is definitely a trend that we need to continue to monitor because the further west it tracks over the next 40 48 to 72 hours obviously could mean that we could be talking about some moderate to major impacts along the east coast now beyond this obviously it's going to turn back out to sea at some point as it is circling around a high pressure system back over in the central atlantic ocean which means it's turning in a clockwise direction which means it should avoid making any sort of landfall in new england but there could be higher waves and rip currents in new england as we go into the later half of next week now i think the biggest thing to take away from all of this is that the entire east coast of the united states i would still be staying 
weather aware. If you have any plans to go to the beach on any of the days next week during the work week, definitely keep an eye out on the flags at the beach that do indicate that there could be some really big rip currents out there and very dangerous rip currents and also high waves are definitely going to be a possibility. There are some models, by the way, that show upwards of 100 foot waves happening very far offshore, but we could also see waves as high as 10 to 15 feet, even closer to areas like South and North Carolina, which is a big problem, obviously, for anybody that's in the ocean. Now, this is a simulation of one model that is indicating a more westerly path, and this is kind of an idea of what we could end up seeing over the next few days. So as we go into Saturday, this will be just sitting off to the north of Puerto Rico and the Leeward Islands, likely as at least a Category 2, if not a Category 3 hurricane. On Sunday, this is expected to rapidly intensify into a powerful high-end Category 3 to low-end Category 4 hurricane. And on Monday, notice how it takes it pretty far to the west, very close to the Bahamas. Again, this is kind of too close for comfort type of stuff here. If it, we were to see a more westerly path, it could get pretty close again to the eastern side of the Bahamas, which would cause at least some storm surge. And also the outer bands would bring the potential for heavy rainfall that could bring some localized flooding. On Tuesday, this continues to skid just to the east of Florida. Again, I don't expect much for Florida aside from the rip current threat and also higher wave heights. On Wednesday and also going to early Thursday, that is when the Icon model brings us right next to North Carolina. So if we were to see major impacts in areas like South or North Carolina or Virginia, they would likely happen on Wednesday or Thursday of this upcoming work week. So that's the time frame to watch for. Now, keep in mind, there are also other models that are not showing this at all, at least that far to the West. For example, the GFS model still keeps us pretty far to the East of the United States and just barely to the West of Bermuda. But obviously this is still something that I am kind of concerned about because I do feel like a lot of models have been shifting just slowly but surely West over the last few days. It's not major shifts by any means, but it's enough to at least raise an eyebrow here that, hey, we could at least see some impacts along the East Coast. I still don't think we're seeing landfall in the United States. I think the odds of that happening at this point are less than 5%. It would take a dramatic change to what is happening with Aaron right now to have that happen. But I do still think there is at least a legitimate possibility that there will be some moderate to potentially major impacts along the East Coast. And just for some clarity, this is kind of what I am thinking is going to happen with Hurricane Aaron. I think it's going to basically do what the GFS model is thinking, where it's basically going to be barely just north of Puerto Rico and the Lesser Antilles this weekend. And then by late Sunday and Monday, I do think it is going to be awfully close to the Bahamas. I don't think it's going to be close enough for major impacts, but I do think some moderate impacts, including storm surge, will be a possibility. And I would not be surprised if we at least got some tropical storm watches in that area here relatively soon. That is something that we're definitely watching for very closely. Then as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, I do think that this is going to continue to move to the north. I don't think it's going to be as far east as the GFS is showing. I personally think it is going to take a fairly close track to North Carolina, probably about 100 to 150 miles offshore from Cape Hatteras, which is obviously close enough for storm surge to be a possibility and also the outer bands to even reach parts of the Carolinas. And then beyond that point, I do think that there will at least be some minor to moderate impacts on the immediate coastline of New England, but I do not expect much in the way of like heavy rain, for example, that will lead to flooding. I think most mostly it'll be just high waves and rip currents. I think it'll stay off to your east. And then beyond this, the tropics are going to continue to stay active. I do think another tropical system will likely develop as we go into the very last week of August around this Bermuda High. The next one that happens has a better chance of going towards the United States, but obviously that is still very far out from now. We are mostly focused right now on Hurricane Aaron. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, beginning with today, which is Friday, and we have a slight risk of severe weather in place, which does include Minneapolis, Eau Claire, Rochester, just to the west of Green Bay, including about 5 million people. We also have a marginal threat that encompasses 11 million people from Chicago all the way back over into eastern Wyoming. The biggest concern for today will be damaging winds and large hail, but there is a chance for a couple of tornadoes. We're going to keep an eye on that back over near Minneapolis, Rochester, Eau Claire, and then back over into the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Wausau is also included in this, so stay weather aware, have ways to receive warnings. There is a low chance of a live stream today, so click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live. And then on Saturday, the threat of severe weather does continue across the Midwest and the Northern Plains, where about 27 million people are included in a marginal threat of severe weather, where isolated damaging winds and hail will be a possibility. There's also a low chance of an isolated tornado or two back over in South Dakota near Pierre, just east of Rapid City and just to the west of Sioux Falls. So stay weather aware tomorrow as well. There's also a low chance of a live stream, so click the bell icon so you're notified if we go live. Now let's talk about the timing of severe weather beginning with today across the Midwest. And this is kind of an idea of what may happen. It may not happen exactly like this, but we should see some storms fire up around 
2 to 3 o'clock across Minnesota, with the main concern being damaging winds and isolated hail. There's a low chance of an isolated tornado or two if any storms are able to stay discreet. But I think what's going to probably happen today is that it's just going to be kind of messy. I don't really see anything being very organized, and it's going to also be pretty random. This is an idea of what could happen. I don't think it's going to be exactly like this, though, where we just have this big cluster of storms going through Minnesota and Wisconsin. What will probably happen is that we have several storms that just fire up in different areas, mainly between 12 and 9 o'clock, and these will eventually move into Wisconsin with mainly a wind threat. But there is a chance of a tornado, so stay weather aware. I don't really expect much beyond a brief tornado risk. And then on Saturday, another round of storms is possible during the morning across areas like Minneapolis, and that would eventually move into Wisconsin and also going towards Illinois during the afternoon hours. This picture here is around 7 o'clock, so there could be some storms back over near Milwaukee and even back into northern Illinois Saturday night, so definitely stay weather aware. Nothing beyond wind is really expected out of that. Now back over in the northern plains, not expecting a whole lot in the way of severe weather today, just a very low hail wind and maybe a very low tornado risk around 6, 7 o'clock in western Nebraska and western South Dakota. That'll eventually move into a little cluster as we go into late Friday night and early Saturday morning, and then eventually as we go into late Saturday and Sunday, there is another chance of a few storms to pop up anywhere from central Nebraska back into western South Dakota, the initial threat being hail and wind, low tornado risk with those storms, and then we may see a few storms also fire up in the overnight hours that could also pose all hazards of severe weather. Then on Sunday, another round of severe weather is a possibility, mainly back over in the northern and high plains, where another risk of hail and wind will be on the table. And then beyond this weekend, we are expecting the threat of at least some isolated to scattered severe weather to continue into Sunday and Monday across the northern plains and the Midwest. Tuesday, Wednesday look the same, just isolated days of severe weather. And then eventually Hurricane Aaron will make a very close approach to North Carolina on Thursday. And then by the following week, so the very last week of August, I don't really see much in the way of really any major severe weather events. I think generally speaking, it's just going to be hot, pretty typical for the late portions of August. Another tropical system, though, will definitely be a possibility, I think, near the tail end of this month. So that'll be something we're keeping an eye on. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We may have another video tomorrow talking all about Hurricane Aaron. If not, we'll see you guys all again in another video on Sunday.